So for some reason there was just glass all over this engine. I just I don't understand what happened there But I got all that vacuumed off now, so it's nice and clean um, We do have a problem here though. I broke this fitting off of here and it went from here to the injectors, so that's not great but the good thing is i found this housing brand new for thirty dollars so that will actually be very easy to replace it looks exactly like this one so yeah not a big issue i'm not going to order it yet because i want to make sure we can get it rotating if we can't get it rotating there's no point in buying parts for it we will just either part it out or scrap it or do something like that. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to put something on this pulley and rotate this. But if you can tell, this whole thing rotates. So this is not directly hooked to the crankshaft. And there might be like, I don't know whether the engine steps up speed. So this might actually rotate faster than the engine, which would make it harder to rotate this than the crank or the flywheel, whatever's in there. I'm sure there's a flywheel in there. I'm gonna try to move this with something first. If we can't get it to rotate with this, then I'm gonna take this off and see what we have in there. And then if we still can't figure out how to get it to rotate, I'm going to take all the injectors out and that should at least reduce the uh, compression. And then we should also be able to look inside the cylinders then and see uh, how they look. So let's do this first and see what we get. I was gonna try to get something around this pulley but I don't have anything big enough. So I'm just gonna put this pipe wrench right on the end of the shaft. Um, I know this doesn't attach to the crankshaft so it doesn't matter. And we're probably not going to use it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I have this. Let's just slip it on there. Maybe we can do it like that. It's backwards, but with that key on there, it shouldn't fall off. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> Try the other way, just in case. in there so this isn't gonna work I think we should just take this off and then we gotta find all the bolts just go around get all the others more glass there man I don't know where all that glass came from We got a board slid under there so we can actually get this off because it was sitting below the pallet right there. But now it should just come off, which is probably kind of heavy. But there we go. Now it is a direct drive, huh? Uh, there's a lot of oil and stuff in there. It is a direct drive, it's just kind of a loose fit because it's a shaft right there. Huh, but it is a direct drive. This might actually be our best way to put pressure on it. We should probably put this back on. So yeah, that's probably the best way to try to put pressure on this engine. So I think I'm gonna slide this back on, put a couple of bolts in, we don't need to put all of them back in. And then we'll just use this to build a spin. Yeah, we're gonna have to take all the injectors out now and uh, see what's going on. Well, I got all the fuel lines off of the injectors and everything, but these things are stuck in there. Like, I've been prying on them quite a bit. You can probably see in the time lapse, but I can't get them out of there. I don't know if I'm missing something or what. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about diesels, but I'm pretty sure you take these two nuts off, take the fuel lines off, and they pull out. There's just like O-rings and stuff holding, like sealing them in there. 
but I don't know if they're known to like get seeds in there or what, but I've been prying on them quite a bit and I don't know what to do now. So I might go watch a video or something and see like if there's a trick to getting these out real quick. All right, so what I found online, people said um, they can get carbon built up on the inside and that prevents them from coming out. So they said to like put like a socket over the top of them and hit them and vibrate. Like vibration helps to knock that off, I guess. I don't know. I think that's a fat chance of working, but who knows? Problem is, it has this little thing on here, so socket doesn't fit on there all the way. Maybe I'll try to like spin it a little because there's a tiny bit of play around the studs, so maybe I'll try that first and see if that gets me anywhere. Hope I can actually hit it. I don't know, it might be moving. Kind of looks like it is, but. Maybe if I put some weight on this while I tap on it. Really doesn't look like anything's moving, but oh, it is. It is definitely twisting. I can see it twisting. Yeah, it's definitely spinning a little. We just gotta get it to pop out. Well, after much hitting on this, it seems that it's finally out. And that would be why. Look how rusty that is. But there's so much surface area for that to stick in there. The end of that also looks really bad. I don't know if that would have worked anyway. At least it's out, so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> kind of just barely see the top of the piston there, but it doesn't look rusty on the top of the piston. Well, I'm just gonna work on getting all these out. I'm probably not gonna record it because it's all the same as the first one, so once I get a bunch of these out, I'll get back to you. All right, so the first and second um, injectors, I had to tap them back and forth, but the other four, I went to the third one here and I went to pry it out and it just popped out. And then I went to the next ones and they all did the same thing. So these four had no issues coming out. It was just these back two here. So that made it way easier for me. I put some penetrating fluid down all the cylinders and now I'm going to try to spin it over. I haven't tried yet. So after I took the first one out, I pried on a little bit, but nothing was happening. So let's see if it'll spin. Cross our fingers. <laughs> well, she maybe sees pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know about that one. The thing about this engine is I have no use for it. I have no projects that need an engine. I honestly have no idea what I would even do with it, even if it was running perfect. I probably was gonna sell it if it was running perfect, because these actually bring quite a good amount of money. With it like this, I don't even know what it's worth, honestly. I mean I don't weigh very much, but with the length of this bar. That's quite a bit of torque on there without the injectors in there. I don't think this is going to rotate. I mean, I guess I can let the cylinders sit for a little bit and see if they free up. Let's take the valve cover off just for funsies. You gotta make sure you put these screws in a place where you never will be able to find them again. That's the only real way to work on a car or an engine or whatever you're working on. Make sure you place them somewhere where you can kick them on the floor or, you know, drop them off a workbench, you know, put them on a paper towel that you wipe with and then forget they're there and then spread them all over the place, you know, your usual stuff. Like I've almost kicked those down there on the pallet a couple times, so just a perfect spot for them. All right, 
Let's crack this thing loose. I'm sure, it'll just pop right off. It hasn't been on here for 30 years or anything. So we learned, I talked to my father-in-law yesterday, and he said that last time this ran was in 1987. So 34 years ago. So that's interesting. So let's have the big reveal. Ba, ba, ba. Wow, it actually looks really nice in there. Oh, we broke that gasket. Never gonna be able to find one of those. So yeah, this actually looks extremely clean. There is no rust in here at all. I'm still pretty surprised that this is seized up. This is what I figured this looked like in here, just from looking through the uh, oil fill cap. I guess you just never know. Kind of a bummer, but you can see, let's see. These two are open, where are that? This one's intake and this one's exhaust. So these are the two cylinders that I had the most trouble getting the injectors out. I guarantee you these are the two cylinders that are also seized. It's always the cylinders that have valves open because it's open to all the humidity and all the air from outside. Guaranteed, these are the two that are stuck. So I guess I can just fill them with some fluid and then hope and pray that they free themselves, but odds are probably won't, but you never know. I kept them in order. The ends of the injectors actually pretty much all look about the same. You can see some of them have the copper washers that came off. It looks like these three right here are the only ones that didn't come out with the end. I, I don't know how that is going to actually let any fuel in. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about, but well, I don't, but I don't know. I don't know how those work. I really don't. I could probably look up a video, see how to test them and stuff, but it seems like a lot of work. Interesting thing just happened. After I did the outro, I just came back here and I'm just like, whatever, I'm just going to jump on it. So I put the bar out there, stand on it, and just start jumping. It turned. I got maybe a couple degrees of rotation. So, um, yeah, the problem with this is that I can't grip onto this because I have to have the pipe wrench on the key in order to get enough grip to rotate it. Yeah, I was literally just like stuffing all the injector holes with paper towels and put the valve cover back on and I was just gonna go in and be done. And I'm just, I just decided to give it one last hurrah. <laughs> It doesn't have any way to grip it, but if I put it on here right here, shouldn't be able to spin and that'll give me more leverage. Check that out. Let's get this valve cover back off. Yeah, look, different valves are open. Should be able to keep this off, flip it over, put it back on. Do a little more. I probably, I put some anti-seas down the cylinders. I should probably put some oil down the cylinders, honestly, now that it's actually rotating. All right, I just got some 10W40 here. That cylinder might be all the way at the top. <laughs> might be on the compression stroke. All right, that should be enough. Well, they all went down. <clears throat> all right, that'll be fine. Let's just keep rotating this as much as we can. We 
got it rotating. <laughs> That's a feat in and of itself. Um, I did notice this valve here, it appears to be sticking down because it's way looser and when there's no pressure supposed to be on it, you can see it's looser or it's further down than the other ones. But honestly, since that last one, I think it's actually getting better. Yeah, I think it's looking good. Um, let's see. What was the other one? This is the other one that was bad, but it's a little loose. It actually kind of matches the other ones, so. Oh, that one's, that one's stuck for sure. That one's got a big gap. So, I don't know, maybe rotating this over and over. We might need to take the rocker arm off and then just hammer, like tap on the valves and see if we can get them to loosen up. But yeah, that'll be an issue. We don't want the valves sticking open. So I think I'm just gonna keep rotating it and see if we can work stuff out. All right, I can spin this over by hand perfectly fine now. Um, the only thing that I've noticed, this valve was sticking and, or not that one, I'm sorry. This one right here was sticking and the push rod came off of the uh, rocker arm here. But after it came off, then the valve spring or the valve reseated and came back up and now I can't get the push rod back on. So I'm gonna have to loosen this screw back out to get the push rod back into place. But all the other ones seem to be fine now. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one even looks right now. So they're all doing good. I think it just needed to rotate some and I can rotate it by hand freely now with this uh, wrench right here. So I think everything's rotating good. I was actually kind of tempted to uh, hook the starter up and just run the starter and just rotate it with that. But I need to fix that push rod first before I want to do that because I don't want to bend the push rod because it's not in the right spot. So I'm going to loosen that, get that put back on, and then maybe we'll hook the starter up and do that. All right, I got that push rod in now. Um, I think I just want to try to rotate it, make sure that valve's not going to get stuck again. It's actually the one right there. I've gone around several different times now and this one keeps coming back up now um, this one oh that one looks like it's starting to compress so that's fine but yeah they all actually seem to be freed up now um, all of them are bouncing back so that is a good sign yeah I think I'm gonna hook the starter up now and just turn it over that way I think that'd be a lot easier and then we can see all the oil come shooting back out of all the injectors. All right, so I got this all hooked up here. Um, I just ran power to the starter, uh, negative to this bolt here, and then I have my signal wire that I should just be able to touch to the positive, and that should rotate the engine. So let's see what happens. Actually, you know what? If we start building oil pressure, we're gonna have a bunch of oil spitting out this pipe here, so aim that um, up there because <laughs> I'm sure that'll be okay <laughs> all right yeah let's uh, give this a go I'm sure this will work out just fine sit to the side here because I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some stuff shooting out over there let's see if I hooked everything up right <laughs> the entire time 
funny. Hmm. Um, why is it not wanting to work now? Did I break something? Maybe we burned it up. I don't know. But honestly, it's rotating over really good. And it looks like all the valves are coming back up now. So that's good. I got such a mess now. All the oil. Wow, it shot pretty far. Got all the way over to the workbench over here, man. Got on our bikes, man, that's that's great. All right, well, I'm gonna clean up this massacre and then uh, I'm not sure if we can use these injectors or not. I guess we can just shove them back in there and hope things happen. But I don't know, I might look at a video on cleaning these, see if that's possible, but I don't see where any fuel is supposed to get through them. So I got, I'm gonna look at some new one of these and see what they actually look like because it's really hard to tell. Clean these all up, stick them back in there, see what's going on. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Um, it's obviously rotating fine. I need to figure out what I, what I did to the starter. Um, I'm hoping I just have a loose connection or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's see what's going on. All right, so I've changed a couple things on here. First, I put an oil pressure gauge on here. And I this is actually the one I bought for the FJ engine but it actually fits in this one, so it works out good. So we did that. I also put a new valve cover gasket on. I was able to buy an original Perkins valve cover gasket, which going straight to Perkins was the cheapest option and it fit perfect, of course. Um, that's pretty much all I've done to it. Oh, I put a new oil filter on it and I filled it with three gallons of oil. I used this uh, Rotella 15w40 <laughs> yeah i put three gallons of it in and that got it to right at the minimum line <laughs> so kind of crazy but it takes a lot of oil so i did all that and i was trying to rotate it to get oil pressure and it just was not building oil pressure at all and i couldn't figure out why so then I loosened the new filter that I put on. I'm like, well, let's see if there's oil coming through there. And sure enough, as soon as I started, oil just started gushing out of there, which seemed odd to me. So I put it back on and then I uh, did it again and we build oil pressure now. So I'm assuming it just needed to bleed itself or something, but I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> I also had to take the starter apart because it was also, um, it stopped working and it was just a pain in the butt. So this is what we got now. So you can see it starts building oil pressure just by doing that. This wire right here gets a little hot, so it's hard to hold it, but yeah. So I got it up to about, I think it was 40 or 50 PSI before just doing the starter like that. So that's good. So we need to uh, get a new housing for this, which I got. So over here, I found a listing on eBay for, it was a lot of two of these. And let me just get them out of here and I can show you. So yeah, I bought two of these filter housings and I found this lot on eBay that it came with two of these. So I got two of the filter housings with the filter, but they're the exact same thing and they should work out perfectly fine. So I'm gonna get this swapped out and I also need to swap out the other one. Get this swapped out, it goes right there. You can see it's exactly the same. But this one, I also need to swap out this filter because I hit it with the uh, thing and stuff there. But I think I might just swap out this whole housing with it maybe, I don't really know. Maybe I'll just take the filter off, but this is different. So I might just need to use the filter off of one of these and put it in here because these don't have this little sight on the bottom. So anyway, let's do that. I really don't think I, yeah, I don't have to have this site on here, so I could just put this directly on there, but I don't know. We'll see. 
what I decide to do. So I'm gonna get that put on and then we'll go from there. Well, getting these lines off was a huge pain. Apparently, there's something inside here, like an O-ring or something, or a seal that prevents them from coming out. I, I don't understand why. I, I need to get that out of there, and I guess I might need to get more of them, I guess. I, I honestly have no idea. All of these lines had some type of like a rubber thing behind them. I'm gonna have to get one off and see if I can make this work because I don't know if you can just put these back in without those rubber things behind them. All right, all of that's back on. I just reused those little plastic things in there. One of them was ripped in half. Um, so we'll see how bad that leaks, but I put it right here and this is coming from the uh, fuel pump so i don't know hopefully this will have the least amount of pressure i don't know what well, this should all actually have the same amount of pressure but i don't know that's just what i did we'll see what happens yeah hopefully it'll run even if it does leak a little bit but anyway those are all on there now we need to go to the injectors so i learned a lot about these injectors i watched a couple of videos on youtube and i actually took this one apart and cleaned it already and it looks like we should be able to clean these up fine. This one was stuck when I took it apart, so it probably would not have worked. Or it might have if we got enough pressure built up. I guess it could start working, but who knows. This one I cleaned. Um, now I'm going to show you what I did and what I learned. And hopefully you can learn something too. I've had these sitting in this uh, solvent for quite a few days now. So yeah, let's take one of these apart and I'll show you what I did. All right, so first off, we got to get the uh, copper like seal ring, crush ring, whatever you want to call it off of there. Then we're going to stick it in the vise here. I'm not taking these apart 100%. You could do more if you want, but I think what I'm doing will make it so it will work. Then you find the right wrench for this, which looks to be three quarters of an inch. And you need to loosen this is not easy sometimes apparently it's pretty tight let's take this off so there is no o-ring that goes in this little groove that is quite literally just the opening where these meet and there's no reason for this to be sealed up here anyway because this copper uh, crush ring down here is what seals all of this And then you get all of this on the inside. So now let's go over here and I'll show you what's in here. So this is the injector side here. You can see there's kind of two little dowels that stick out and then a hole. And then this side, you got the same thing in there. But then you gotta push this out of here like that. So this is the injector nozzle here. There's little holes right in the end of this tip here. And you can actually see the number on there. So apparently these are what go bad. There's a number on there so you know what you have. Made in England, so cool. But the part that was stuck is this little part here, this brass part. Yeah, it's stuck in this one too. So this, how this works is fuel pressure comes in here and it goes down this little hole on the outside here and then on the outside here uh, fuel goes into here and then on the bottom side of this needle the fuel pressure pushes back on this needle and then because there's a spring in here that holds it down and then the needle gets pushed up and then as soon as it becomes unseated on the end uh, fuel squirts out. And then since the pressure drops, the needle reseats. But since this is stuck in here, there's no way for the pressure to push it up, which there's a good chance the pressure, it's very high pressure apparently, like 3000 PSI or something crazy. I don't know, don't quote me on that. That's what I saw online, but maybe that's wrong. I don't know. But yeah, so the pressure probably could have pushed this free, but I want to actually get this free before 
I, I just figured it's better to do that now. So what I did, because you don't really want to mess it up, the clearances in here are pretty tight. I just put some paper towel on a plier here, and then I go on here, and then I just kind of spin it and pull it out. Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, this one's definitely tighter than the last one, so once I get this pulled out, I'll show you. This one is way more stuck than the other one was, so I have to resort to something different here. Which this shouldn't matter it getting hot because the engine gets hot too. I mean, this is obviously going to get it hotter than the engine would, but hopefully it won't take too much heat in order to pull this out. Got it. Only took a little bit of heat. Not too bad. This is still a little hot, but this is the needle. So fuel comes down around that, it comes down through the side, and then it puts fuel into this area here, and then it, the force pushes back on this taper right here, and that's what makes the, this needle move up. And then once it moves up, this little seat here becomes unseated, and the fuel and all the pressure can go down this way, and then it goes out and through the nozzle at the end. Still hot. <laughs> so that's how these work. So this obviously needs to be nice and clean or else it's not going to move. We get this cleaned up and then put it all back together and then we'll get all these injectors in and we should be good to go. All right, so I got the rest of the injectors apart. Funny enough, the one that I showed you guys was the one I couldn't get. So the rest of them, I just pulled apart with the pliers here. So yeah, anyway, one other thing I wanted to mention about these is you can actually adjust the uh, pressure it takes to open up the injector on Perkins injectors, I guess. Um, I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's a little slot in a screw in there and you can either tighten or loosen that to adjust the pressure um, to open the valves. So yeah, just thought that was interesting. A little tidbit that I saw online. So yeah, I'm gonna get these all cleaned up now and get them all put back together. I'm not going to be taking this end of it apart because I don't wanna mess up the uh, setting for the pressure and because I don't know what it's supposed to be or and I don't have a machine to be able to set the pressure either. So I'm just gonna leave those how they are. But if we get this all cleaned up, the rest of it should work fine, hopefully. I got all the injectors cleaned up and put back together. Um, now we just got to get them back in the engine and get all the fuel lines back on and at that point I think we will be ready to try to start it. Oh, I also need to fix one of the fuel lines here that I broke, but I should be able to do that just fine. So let's get all that fuel stuff back on. I got all the fuel lines put on, everything's tightened down. I did leave the connections going to the injectors loose because we're gonna have to bleed the system. Um, the only thing we have left is this. We need to uh, make a hose going from here to here. And then this one, I believe was a fuel return line. So I'm probably just gonna put a longer line back to the fuel tank that we're gonna use, but that one's not really near as important as this one is. So. We'll get this on there and get back to you. I got this line made on here. Everything came out just fine. I had to go get one little fitting for it, but it was good. The return line, I don't have hooked up. I don't have any more uh, line. So not entirely sure how that's gonna work, spraying right on the exhaust, but I'm sure that'll be fine. So I have some diesel in this little container here and the fuel pump has a prime lever so I can pretty much just do this and I was doing it for a little bit and you can see whenever I'm doing it, getting some fuel into the filter here. So it might take a little bit to fill this up, but it seems to actually go pretty quick. Oh yeah, I'm already getting air in it. so. It goes through a pretty quick fill in the system. So I kind of wish I could 
fit that can over here and just stick it in there, but it's a little too big. So maybe I can find a smaller can or something. But anyway, I'm just gonna prime the system and then we'll try to start it. So I have the return going into this jug here. I have this hose hooked up to this jug here going into that. This is filled up, that's leaking, don't mind that. Um, all of these are loose. I need to, I think, try to turn it over and get fuel coming out the injectors. I don't think there's any electrical connections you need to have these run that I know of. I didn't disconnect anything when I took it out. And I'm pretty sure all you have is one of these is fuel stop, which I think it's this top one because it kind of wants to self-return. And then this, I believe, is throttle. One of them. Of, I don't know which one is which, but that's my guess anyway. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, I have a piece of wood over here just in case it wants to, you know, do crazy things. So that'll be there. And then, yeah, I, I think that's about it. I'm, I'm going to try to turn it over with this little battery um i don't i i honestly don't know if it's gonna work because it's a, such a tiny battery but we'll have to see let's see what happens we're gonna have to turn that on to get fuel going so <laughs> Eventually, I just don't want to get this too hot. It's actually not hot at all. So probably this battery. So uh, we'll see. I'm gonna give it a little of both of these because I don't know which is which. Well, we're gonna run out of battery pretty quick. All right. So the last clip that you saw, um, I was just starting to try to get this running. I went through. A lot of things with that um, so I was trying for days to get this to work um, I wasn't necessarily get, trying to get it to run which I kind of was but I have hours of footage that I basically just deleted um, I could not get the injection pump to move fuel to the injectors that was the biggest problem I was having um, I learned that I need to bleed the system into the injection pump here, so I had to bleed all the air out of here, all the air out of here, and then I had to bleed the air out of the system. So there's two bleeder screws on here, one here and one up here. I opened those up and a bunch of air came out. Um, so yeah, that was that. I thought I had all the system bled at that point, and then so these two levers here this bottom one is the fuel shut off so that's off that's on this top one is the throttle and that is full throttle that is no throttle um, what I found out was this linkage right here is on a spring and then there's like a rod that moves a little arm in here to give it fuel when you actuate this lever and the rod that's going into here is stuck so i took this off which this is full of fuel i took this off and i got that freed i put it back on i pushed it all the way down and it stuck again so i'm pretty sure that's our problem is why i can't get any fuel into the system is because i can't give it any throttle um I was able, it moved a tiny bit, but it wasn't enough to actually even get the air out of the lines. And I don't want to run the starter forever and burn the starter up again. Um, yeah, I had to take all that off and rebuild the whole thing. The brushes are in bad shape. It, the whole inside of it was rusted, but I got it to work. So I really don't want to test my luck with the starter. So what I ended up doing was I got a whole gasket set for this injection pump. So I'm going to take it off 
and go through it. I'm not gonna take it entirely apart, I don't think. I think I'm just gonna make it so everything can move, but the gaskets are bad. The gasket around this right here is leaking and stuff, and it's just not great. That's what I'm doing. So here's my gasket set here. It has a million things inside of here. So many things. Like I said, I'm not gonna replace everything in there because I don't think everything is seized up. So I'm going to link a video that I found rebuilding this injection pump. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I really just don't know enough about them and I don't wanna make a tutorial on that, especially when there's another video that the guy does a really good job with. So I'm gonna link that in the description. Please go check that out if you actually wanna see how to take one of these apart and rebuild it. He does a really good job. So go watch that, but I'm gonna time-lapse the whole thing. So let's get to it. As you can see, I got this all redone, all cleaned up and put back on here. I got it all bled off, so there shouldn't be any air in there. Now we're gonna crank it over and see if anything shoots out these before I put the fuel rail back on because nothing comes out, then nothing's working. So let's see if we can get something to come out of there. welcome back um, it's been quite a while since the last clip uh, as you can see I'm pretty sure the last clip was I was getting the injection pump back on and bleeding the system and I just got frustrated because the system wouldn't bleed it did the exact same thing as it did before so I rewatched the video that I have linked in this video to rebuild the injection pump and I realized the problem I'm having was most likely the high pressure pump in the injection pump. So there's two pumps in the ejection pump. There's a transfer pump, which is the one that's on the top here. And then there's a high pressure pump, which are these, there's two little pistons inside here down at the bottom. And I didn't take that apart. I thought this was the only pump that was in there and it worked fine and everything else was clean, cleared out so I didn't see why I needed to take it all the way apart. But what I found out was this is another high pressure injection pump which actually sends the fuel 
to the injectors. So I took this apart and the pistons were completely seized in there. They were all gunked up with just old fuel and dried out and they just wouldn't move at all. So now you can see I can move these back and forth. Maybe you can see that, but they are freed up and move back and forth now. So I'm very, very confident that that's what's been holding up the fuel injection this whole time. So I took that apart. I got it. I started putting it back together and I messed up. So what I messed up was this little thing right here is called the, uh, what do you call it? The rotor nut. It was very difficult for me to get off of there. I just put a putty knife in here and then um, a crescent wrench or adjustable wrench and then I broke it free. You can see it has reverse threads on this one because it's a right rotation. And I cracked it free and it was pretty hard to get off there. When I was putting it back on, I put the putty knife in there and then I put a wrench on it and was tightening it. And I broke two of the things off of there. So you can see they're just completely broke off. They're sitting here somewhere right here. So I was pretty upset about that and very annoyed. What I did was I went online and I ordered another one of those. Um, it was coming from Europe and it was the only one I could actually find at the time. So I ordered it and they had both the right and the left rotation ones because the pumps can spin either way depending on what pump you have. So I said I need a right rotation nut. They sent me a right hand threaded nut, <laughs> which the right hand rotation pump takes a left hand rotation nut. So they sent me the wrong one and that is what this is right here. This is the wrong one. So I emailed them back and they said they're sorry. They misunderstood what I needed. So I believe they were going to send me another one, which they might still be. I don't know. But then I went on eBay and I found this one on eBay that was a left hand rotation nut or a reverse thread nut. So I just bought on there. It was in the US already, so I got it in a couple days. And I still don't know if the other one was even sent or not. So I just wanted to get this together and done. This video has taken a while to do. I don't know. I've been working on it ever since the video of where I removed this engine from the combine. I've been working on it ever since there then. So I just want to get this done. I want to get this engine done so I can get it out of here. And it's just it's taking up a lot of space. So just want to be done with this. So that's where we're at now. So I got this tightened. I It does not take much. I read online, or actually this nut came with a spec. It's 11 inch pounds of torque. It's basically by hand. It, it doesn't take hardly anything. So I got that tightened. We're good to go there. And now I just need to get the injection pump. As you can see here, it's all taken apart. I need to get this all put back together again. And hopefully, it'll be good to go. So I'm gonna put this all back together since you've already seen this, I'm not gonna record it, but get this all put back together and then I'll get back on there and I will get back to you once we try to bleed the uh, fuel line and get fuel to the injectors. So we'll see you then. We are back to where we left off before. Everything is connected. I have the bleeder screws disconnected on or removed on here so that can just bleed out. Um, we need to bleed the system. I need to crack this uh, bolt loose here so we can get the air out of here, which actually there probably shouldn't be any air in there, but we'll probably do that anyway just to make sure. And we just gotta get the air bled. I have all the injector nuts loose. Um, everything's tight here though. So let's see if we can finally get this to bleed. So this is our return line. So it just dumps right back in there and then our feed is coming out of here as well. So it just recycles the diesel in there. So let's crack this and then see if we can get some diesel coming out of here. It'll just fountain out of here eventually, if I remember correctly. There's quite a bit of air in there. There we go. Get this back on. So quite a bit of air. So we stop getting bubbles. 
probably filling everything up still, but oh, we're getting some out of the return now. Oh, we got some coming out of there. All right, I think we're probably bled now. Get this back on here. Apparently it was filling the whole system, not just right here, which makes sense. That's in there. Did we get some coming out of this other one here? Tighten this, because we definitely got everything. Now oh, here we got some coming out of here now. Let's do a little more. Lots of air. Seems pretty steady now. Makes a little bit of a mess. I'm really sick of all the diesel everywhere. All right, let's make sure we got all the air out of that. Yeah, there's no more air coming out of that. All right, should be ready to try to start it. Well turn it over and see if we get fuel coming out of the lines. I really think we're going to get it this time. I would be surprised if we don't because there's literally nothing that I didn't look at. Alright, let's see if we can get the return going here. Yeah, it maxed out on the manual pump over there so we should be good to go. Oh, all right, I'm gonna get this tool off here. Got my runaway block <laughs> and I gotta get a battery and then we're gonna turn it over. I got the battery hooked up here. So we are going to try and turn it over. See if we can get fuel out of the lines here. If we get that, then I'll tighten all the lines and we'll try to start it. So see what we got. Get the fuel on, throttle up. See what we got. Not seeing anything yet. Probably be better if we could turn it over quicker because, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't turn over very fast. I could hook up this power real quick. Let's do that. All right, I got power hooked up. Let's try again. All of them got fuel going to them, finally. Hopefully you guys saw that. So now we will tighten all these up and fire it up. Hopefully. The last piece of this puzzle is the injectors, but hopefully I got them clean enough and free enough to actually work. This is the moment I've been waiting probably a month or so for. I honestly don't remember how long it's been. It should work now. Let's see what happens. I got my block here in case it runs away for some reason, so actually I might set it there. I can grab it and put it on there quick. Fuel's on. I'm gonna leave the throttle all the way down. Hopefully it'll just start and idle. Let's see. And I also have this strap just in case it shakes a bunch. I'm gonna have my hand on the kill.
trying. <laughs> I could uh, give it a little squirt of ether or something too, but I really don't want to. We can try a little bit, maybe. All right, I got this fresh can, so we'll put a little in there and see if that helps. It probably will, but... See what happens with that. like that was the only one that was leaking. I think it does like that ether a little bit, but I don't want to give it too much. It worked. Finally. Oh. I don't want to let it run too long though because it doesn't have any coolant in it. As you can see, it's kind of smoking out of where the water pump goes. But holy cow, it actually runs really good. <laughs> oh man, this is amazing. I would really love to put this in a car. I just don't have a car. If I hadn't already built this Falcon with the engine that's in it, I probably would have put this in there. I think that would have been really cool. But 
I don't want to redo that now. It would be fun to find another vehicle to do it with, but... I mean, I don't know where I'm going to find another vehicle, so... I don't have any other ones, so... Yeah. It's very smoky in there. <laughs> have it kind of venting as much as possible, but... Oh man, I'm so happy. That is amazing to hear it run. Had 50 pounds of oil pressure too. Had a bunch of stuff in the exhaust. You could see it spit out <laughs> everywhere. Oh man. It ran really good and idled fine. Oh man. This is honestly exactly what I expected it would do once we got the fuel. Because there was no, no signs of anything not working. It does look like we have some leaks though. I'm not sure where that's coming from exactly, but I might have to, I might need to clamp these down a little more. I know there's a leak right here coming from this, but man, that's amazing. Oh, that's so good. Well, that's going to end it for this video. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun learning about this engine. Just learning about diesels in general. I love that this takes zero electronics to actually run. You need electric, you need 12 volt to start it, but to have it running, there's no wires. It's just, it's such a cool thing. I really love that. I don't know, I don't have plans for this. I, I want, my original plan was just to get it running and sell it, cause it's worth, I don't know, about 1500 bucks or something. And it cost me, well, I think I got a couple, maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars into it now with everything, but I don't know. It it would be really cool to put in a vehicle, but like I said, I don't have a vehicle to put it in. And I would have to the big problem is I'd have to find some transmission to go on here and some type of mount for the transmission as well. And I just I don't know. I haven't done any research on that. But man, it'd be a really cool project to put into a vehicle i think that'd be really cool but thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one i also wanted to show you starting it back up real quick i let it idle for a little bit and the smoke really cleared up After letting it idle for a little bit, the smoke really cleared up, so the rings probably reseeded. Awesome. <laughs>